a book can educate a child. That's why Quintin Pastrana built libraries to empower the dreams of our future leaders. So, Quintin, thank you for being part of this show called Self Made. Can you share with us your childhood? Well, Rebecca, thanks so much for having me over on your show. Um, my childhood is a very special childhood uh, because you know, it's very simple and uh, very, very close to both my parents and my grandparents. So that nurturing environment. They taught me to be very, very uh, conscious of other people's feelings, of the way people understand things and how you need to first find out how you can communicate to them better before you get what you want. And I think that was a the lesson they taught me. That made, obviously, when I started um, learning more about being competitive, that was a good way of, of also being able to balance that, that competitive edge. So what's your happiest memory with your family when you were a kid? At that time, we didn't have 100 channels in cable. There were probably only five when I was growing up. But it, would, it didn't matter because I wasn't exposed to that. And I was exposed to books which really engage your imagination more. And so those were my favorite moments where my, after a nice merienda with my mother and my grandmother, uh, my grandmother in Binyan, for example, or my mother in Manila. How was your life being a student? Ah, that's an interesting <laughs> question. As a student, it was actually very difficult because um, I had a learning disability when I was young. And so I wasn't always um, taking in what I learned, I, especially when it came to the complex subjects like math. I always found it to be a little more difficult than my other classmates. Mm -hmm. And only later on in life, as a graduate student, did I learn that I did have a learning disability. But thankfully, um, I just persisted. And without being diagnosed or anything, that actually helped me. Because my understanding is if you are diagnosed, they will give you medication for it. And that medication really dulls your mind. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, that didn't happen to me. So, uh, so many students right now, uh, go through a lot of challenges like what you've gone through before so what's your best advice to them how to handle that kind of situation if they they are going through that right now oh uh, rebecca i mean it's it's, it's a, a really important lesson for people to learn hopefully not too late mm -hmm. um i think the, the main thing i learned that that people should understand especially nowadays when there's so many distractions you got social media you've got games you've got your smartphone you've got your you know your tablets and, and there's not a lot of time to keep quiet mm -hmm. and that's I think the big advice I would give people is find mm -hmm. a way to have some quiet time where you don't have your cell phone all the time and if you keep doing that it's like you're growing at the same time by keeping still mm -hmm. Wow. so with that um, what kind of job um, you wanted when you work it is that what you're doing now Yes, actually, um, definitely. I think, um, especially with my recent uh, transfer to Bloomberg, it's a way to educate people. Um, the best way to empower people is to make them learn how to provide for their own livelihood, not to be dependent on other people. So I think mm -hmm. Bloomberg does that. Uh, Why well, I'm really uh, happy with the opportunity to translate simple, uh, very complex issues into very simple language mm -hmm. and very simple concepts so that we can help people empower themselves so that they can get into business, get into investments, uh, be more independent financially and economically so they can pursue their dreams. I think that's what I do now at Bloomberg. The second thing I do also is I help build libraries. And the, one of the reasons I do that is because I want other people to have the same experience as me. We're in, if you have access to books, that's really the best tool to have in life. As I mentioned, it's really a personal uh, vocation of mine because I learned and benefited from the environment of having books mm -hmm. so my understanding is the Philippines does not have a lot of um, infrastructure or access for learning mm -hmm. especially public um, libraries which really do serve a lot of value for other countries whether it's a developed country like Canada or a developing country like Nepal or India you really are looking at libraries as um, a community resource for learning. So I wanted to do that here in the Philippines. And so far it's been good. We've been working with different community stakeholders, local governments, and NGOs. And basically we've been able to help build and renew um, over 100 libraries since 2010. And, uh, and it gives you pride and joy because it also gives, again, the children who are in these libraries and the adults and everybody else, regardless of age or background, an opportunity to become the best of who they are because they're learning. Because of that project, um, Quintino, 
um, what are the reaction that you see with the children yeah. when you give them the book? That's a wonderful question because every time we go to a library, that's exactly what we see. And you know, one of my professors used to tell me the best moment in his life is when he sees somebody open a book and the whole world is open to them. That's exactly what I feel um, when I see the kids and even the parents. They, they feel like they're kids again too. So they open the book, it's like they're transported to another world, they're very intense and you could see them growing before your eyes in terms of wonder, uh, in terms of hope. So when you see these kids, what's your best advice to them to be the best? Yeah, well, um, I think is to, uh, my advice would be to keep reading, keep learning. If you um, are encouraged to dream, but at the same time find living role models and mentors, I think you have a good formula. Uh, for reaching your own dreams. And also one of our um, biggest <clears throat> vision for our country to make Philippines first world. What's your best advice to all Filipinos? So I think what we need to be um, that first world country when we're getting there is to invest more in the kind of education that will make our uh, economy do better. Uh, the kind of uh, education that allows you to run businesses, not just be an employee. Uh, the kind of education that allows you to keep your values while making money. Um, and that, and you know, I think we have a good base to work with, but we need a little more investment in terms of higher education uh, and uh, a more holistic education that teaches you numbers, but teaches you values also and teaches you um, service. All right, thank you very much, Kinti. Rebecca, I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you for sure helping me share my insights. Every success has its struggles. Every dream has its trials and tests. Listen to their stories. Because if they did it, you can also be self-made.